Hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. My hair wasn't doing right, so I just grabbed some scissors and gave it a little bit of a trim. And now, I think I've scared it into somewhat submission. But I guess it's time for a haircut. So how is everybody? Happy July 3rd. One more day to the big day. Let me get some water. I'm really thirsty. Mm. So we've been low on rain around here. And oh boy, did the skies let loose last night. We noticed our phones went off with weather alerts. And so we ran to check it. And it said, flash flood alert. Well, luckily, we don't live in a low-lying area. There's a lake across the street, but we're up the hill a bit from it. So thank goodness. So who is here? We see Sonia here and Laura. So good to see you. My, my computer. Oh, there we go. My computer page. Do you ever have... Hi, Kathy and Mary. Do you ever have... Um, like something on your computer that you've clicked and then it leaves like a bluish cast over everything. I don't know why it does that and it irritates me. But anyway, so I had to fix that. But it is awfully good to see all of you. Hello, Miss Marsha. Miss Marsha is so, I mean, devoted to her job. She is our, our, Moderator with the mostest couldn't be. I'm straightening up my desk while I'm talking to you. Let me tell you, I have decided that I really, really have to get this room clean because summertime brings out the crickets and the little, I don't know if they're centipedes, millipedes, whatever. I'm sick of them. So I've told Mark, get the bug stuff. I'm going to get this room cleaned up, and then we're going to bug bomb it and get rid of all these little critters. They can have all the space outside they want. They just can't be in here. So, hello. It is so good to see you. Let me turn this light off. It's a little bright. There we go. Okay. So, it is awfully good to see you. So, what's been going on? Hi, Miss Debbie. Laura, so good to see Laura. I missed her for a while, and it's so nice to see her back. So, and we've got a few. I don't think I have too many new show and tells, except from my family, because my daughter who lives here went up to see her sister and brother in Maryland, and they took some really, really cute pictures. And I've got a picture. We, we babysat the grandpup, and I took a picture of of her she is such a doll baby i tell you what she's a standard poodle and we have their toy poodle and poodles are so smart and you can really talk to them and tell them what you need them to do and they're just amazing i'm putting a foot back on my sewing machine because i'm going to need it on there i forgot the other night that i had taken off and put or the other day, I put a different foot on. Luckily, I caught it out of the corner of my eye. But this room is a mess. Every surface has piles of stuff on it. So I think I know what I'm doing starting tomorrow morning. But anyway, Hel Mary is working on arranging and pinning together your painted art quilt. That's wonderful, sweetie. That is wonderful. Oh, Marcia called me pinky. Yeah, it's kind of sad in a way because the color's fading. I'm just going to be normal soon. And it's not fun for me to be normal. So anyway, but yesterday, whew, I went outside. I ordered a new hedge trimmer. And this time I ordered a battery-powered hedge trimmer. And... I like to keep it up here instead of losing it in all of the stuff confusion that's Mark's garage. And so I ordered it and um, because I like to do the flowering shrubs, the smaller flowering shrubs, because I know exactly when they need to be done and it's something I can do myself. And uh, so 
I got it in and it's great. And it can't do big, you know, it says can do up to three quarters of an inch stem. It's not that strong, but it's perfect for trimming Nandinas and boxwoods and things like that. So I went out yesterday and I was just trimming. I only lasted an hour. I told Mark the battery only lasts an hour. That's good because the battery and I, we're kind of on the same level there. <laughs> so when the battery wears out, I'm worn out. So anyway, oh, Crafty Queen, how are you? So nice to see you. So nice to see you. So anyway, um, so I got that done. I've been babysitting my grand dog. I, I've had, oh, now I got a new steam cleaner a couple months ago because the one we had died. I am so glad I got that new steam cleaner because it's so much lighter and easier to use. I was so thrilled that yesterday after I cut the bushes down, I steam cleaned my sunroom, and it was an actual pleasure to use. It wasn't one of those heavy monstrosities. It's really nice. So, Friday night, I guess, I happened to be checking my email, and it wasn't my fault. It was Bissell's. <laughs> Bissell sent me an email saying, if you order a new vacuum cleaner, you know, based on the amount you spend, they'll give you a certain amount off the vacuum cleaner. Well, oh, th these beads? Oh, thank you. Yep, I sure did make it. And I'll, I'll tell you how I made it in just a moment. Thank you so much. So, um, in fact, let me tilt this down just a little put it up there and then that way you can see it um but well yeah i think that's good um so i went looking for vacuum cleaner because the vacuum cleaner we're using we have had for 12 years yeah i just wanted you to be able to see it but we've had it for 12 years and so it was like okay I've been noticing different things, and Mark did. Now I can't get my camera right. That's what I get for messing with everything. But anyway, Mark had updated some belts and filters, and we thought, oh, it's really doing better. But I was vacuuming Thursday? When, no, Wednesday. And it wouldn't pick up little stuff off the floor. I kept going over it. It's upright, over and over it. And then... I've just noticed lately, I vacuum, and I know there's stuff in the canister, but it just doesn't look that clean. So when Bissell came up with their, you know, I was, I think it was like 20% off or something, but it ended up being a really good deal. Um, so I found one, a pet vacuum, and um, it was like $40 off. And so it has a swivel. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but the older I get, the harder it, hi, Middleton, yay, the, the more my shoulders ache. And at night when I'm sleeping, if I lay on one side too long, you know, well, when I vacuum that with that heavy upright and you're trying to turn, it's like you have to yank it and twist. And my shoulders really hurt when I vacuum. So this one was a swivel. And I thought, I want to try that. And then the coolest thing is it had the hose. You take the handle out, which means you've got the hose there, and you can put something on and get cobwebs. Because normally when I vacuum, if I'm worried about cobwebs, I have to take a separate little dust mop with me and kind of go after those. And um, because to take the hose out of the old one, I can't get it to stay in. You have to push it down in like this, and it doesn't want to stay. And you're vacuuming away, and all of a sudden you realize the hose is out. So, I got a new vacuum cleaner. Now, for me, hi, Miss Judy. Annette Parsons, how are you? Boy, is it good to see you. And our dear Jody is here, and I'm hoping she's feeling better. I wanted to tell Jody, too, while I was thinking about it. I might have already told her, this may not work for you. But I had a lot of nausea after um, my kidney cancer, and Honeycrisp apples 
I would I keep I would keep a one in a bowl with a paring knife right beside my chair. And especially when I ate, if I felt nauseous, I would cut a slice of apple and it would take the nausea away. I don't know how it works. My doctor wondered maybe it was the pectin in the apple, but I thought I would tell you just in case in any way that helps. You're doing better today than yesterday. Okay. And, um, but yeah, our, our Jody is, uh, she's wonderful, but I tell you what, it's tough. I mean, chemo is not easy, but she is our hero. And the last time they checked, they couldn't even find the tumor. So she's doing much better, I think, than anybody expected. And so that's really good. But anyway, the new vacuum cleaner, I think we ordered it Friday night. It came in today. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So I'm a, I was running a little behind today because my daughter came back in town from Maryland to pick up their guinea pig and the, the grand dog. And then the vacuum cleaner came in. Of course, we had to open that and check it all out and try it. Oh, my gosh. Ladies, if you're using the same old vacuum cleaner for like more than 12 years like we were, you won't believe what a new vacuum cleaner can do. It is wonderful. Oh, yes. Isn't, isn't, isn't Jody's news amazing? Amazing. Betty Middleton's here too. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have over 3,000 subscribers. And I thought, you know, in the scheme of things, when you look at Lisa Capen and stuff, I'm just a little tiny fish in this pond, in this big old pond. But doing this show makes me so happy. And the ladies I have met inspire me. I am so fortunate. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who subscribe. It makes a difference. The other night I was sitting there watching and I was at 2.9. And I refreshed the screen and up pops 3,000. I was so excited. So I'm not famous, but thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm famous right here in my studio. <laughs> but anyway, but I love, I love what I do. I love being able to reach out to y'all. I love, I love how productive and inspired you help me become. Um, the inspiration I get from you, the photos I get, the ideas. Um, it's wonderful. And it's been really, really good for me. And just like Jody found out, you know, having all us all keeping her close and wishing her all the best during her treatment, it really does help. And my, when my doctor, my surgeon, when I went back for my almost two year recheck and he said, Hey, there's nothing there. And, um, he said, how's your YouTube channel? I said, it has helped me be more creative than I've ever been. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, my only frustration is I have more ideas than time to do them. But anyway, but yet last week we had our pink Palooza party for Miss Jody. I'll show you the pink photos you sent in again because they touched my heart. They really touched my heart. The fact that you cared so much. And... I, I just, I love this group. I don't know what else to say. Oh, y'all are so sweet. Y'all are doll babies. So, power is possibility. Isn't that the truth? So, anyway, but today I thought I'd put a little bit of a 4th July outfit. And uh, one day I might show you my new vacuum. Because I'm quite proud of it. Oh, and another exciting thing. I told Mark I wanted to do something different today. So last night, I had a terrible time falling asleep. Sleep. It rained so hard. There's just, it's still and, and cloying. You step outside the door, and it's like stepping into a sauna. It's not fun. And so my windows are fogged up. I mean, this is crazy town. In fact, let me see if I can show you. Hold on just a second, guys. Let's see if I can show you. Look at this. Isn't that ridiculous? 
simply ridiculous. I mean, I feel like I'm in the middle of the Amazon here. But um, that's summer in North Carolina. It's so funny because I used to live uh, on the East Coast up Maryland. And I thought, oh, I want to get away from the humidity. Then I moved here. But it's not as bad. When you drive into Maryland, there's a certain point you reach that the air just feels wet. And it's like, I can't do that anymore. I'll never move to Florida for several reasons, but the humidity is a biggie. So anyway, uh, yeah, we'll have a show our vacuum day because you know what? Once you start to realize, I don't want it to be given as a romantic gift to me. No, but because that used to be the big joke, you know. Oh, I don't know why she's upset. I gave her a new vacuum. But getting a tool that you have to use every week, getting a new one that's easier to use, easier to keep clean. The filters on this one are so much easier to keep clean. And, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I had mentioned that I had been not just not feeling myself, not feeling that good. I realized my asthma was out of control. So I've been taking my asthma medicine and I'm feeling so much better. So between that and the tooth, it's like I'm a different person now. Thank goodness. But anyway, but we're we're waiting for Miss Jody to be ready to just have some fun and do wild and crazy girl things. And we're so happy she's doing better. I want to send a shout out to Miss Linda McCollum, who wrote me a wonderful email. I wrote her back this morning. And um, she's been having eye surgeries and all kinds of things. So be keep her close to your heart. She's a dear lady and a tremendous fiber artist. And in fact, let me, yeah, let me grab something Miss Linda did because it's so beautiful. I'd really like you to see it. Okay. Look at this. This is the kind of work. And you know what? I had it upside down because I just looked at the way she signed it. But isn't this beautiful? I just love her work. Isn't that amazing? And that's just taking how many of us have drawers full of little scraps of lace, of little buttons, of little, just different little, you know, floss, uh, spools of, of unique thread, um, how many of us have tons of DNC floss, all of that. And when you realize you can take that and you can turn it into a beautiful work of art. And she's such a thoughtful gift giver. She even puts the little circles, the little the little hangers on it for you. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? So just wanted to give a shout out to Miss Linda, Nadine posted the sweetest message and miss nadine i'm telling you right now you are always a member of this group and you're always a member in wonderful standing and you're you are a huge part of the heart of this group miss nadine we couldn't love you more we're so tickled with your horse and you have a lot going on and you're a young vibrant woman and we want pictures and we want to just keep up with all the wonderful things you have going in your life and the elections don't go right i might want to decide to come move over there with you <laughs> so anyway but i'm gonna to try to stay off politics although i've been very happy with the committee meetings but i'm trying to stay off politics here this should be a safe zone for us. <laughs> a hap our happy little place. <laughs> Thank goodness for Bob Ross, huh? All right. So let's talk about this necklace. Let me get it off my big old head. This was so much fun. And I'm going to order some new wooden beads so I can make more of these. Because they're really cool. And you, what this is, it's some amazing quilt fabric I had. And you 
put the you make a tube make it into a tube let me see if i can show you i just sewed it into a tube the tube has to be as wide as the biggest bead because if you notice the beads go from the widest and in and out with different sizes to give it interest. And so you make a tube of your fabric and then you put a bead in. And I was lucky. This was like a thin voile, V-O-I-L-E fabric or voile, voile fabric. And I was able to get the little gold beads to go in between the other beads. If you're, you know, you, you, you might have to check the dimension of the beads to see if you can, because I love the gold beads being in between the wooden button and it holds everything in place. But I tried to put beads on one of my other necklaces. The fabric was too thick to get it. So when you see a really nice thin fabric or polyester, that's a great choice for these. But how easy is this? Easy and inexpensive. And every time I wear it, I get compliments on it. So there you go. And much easier than trying to paint beads or whatever. You just wrap them in fabric. And I like this fabric because it has. I can wear it with blue. I can wear it with red, black. I mean, it's got a little bit of peach. So it's very versatile. Very, very versatile. Deb run for mayor. <laughs> If I ran for president, no, that, no, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll fix this stuff. I just wanted to show you, I hung up a new quilt really quickly, mainly because it hides the junk in the room. But also I thought, let's put something up and have something fresh to look at. And it looked bright and colorful for the 4th of July. And it's called Rubik's Cube. And I do believe that the pattern might be free. But you might want to look it up. Rubik's Cube. And uh, I really enjoyed making that. I took it in a class at Myrtle Beach quilt party. And I love that quilt. So I would love to say I have tons of stuff to do with you today. I only have one real project that I'm working on today. But it is going to be a fun one. I made the pattern up and put it on the site. I was a day late with that. But I got it up. Real quick, I wanted to show you, that remember last week I had a huge pile of fabric. I did iron it right after the show. I put it on um, an old bolt, and then I taped and put PDF. This was not purchased PDF. This was Kona cotton, just white Kona cotton. But what I did is I scoured it, which means in modern terms... It means I put it through, actually I put it through two washes on the hottest water setting of my wash machine with a good detergent and I threw a couple towels in just so it would have something to agitate against. And the purpose of that is to remove any of the coatings, the sizing, any of that that they put on the fabric when they're creating it and they put those on there so that it you know, it's easier for them to handle and wind on a bolt. Then I put it in the clothes dryer with no dryer sheet, no fabric softener, anything, and put it on less than full dry. So when it came out of the dryer, it was mostly dry, but slightly damp. That makes it perfect then to press and put on a bolt. This is five yards and this is going to be ready for me to do my dyeing. My daughter's picked up some alum. Do you remember about a year, year and a half ago, I tried doing some marbling. The marbling looked great, but it didn't stay in the fabric. I did some research on that, and guess what? It was my fault, which I knew it would be. But you need to soak the fabric in alum. And you soak the fabric, wring it out. I'm trying to think, I'm, you may have to rinse it off, you know, I've got that information set aside. And then you let it dry, then you press it, and then you marble with it. And I saw, what I saw was, uh, I've been trying to watch up all my old quilting arts, because we dropped our um, satellite TV service. And now we're doing streaming, which is much cheaper. And... Um, but I've been watching and I, oh, I was fascinating watching this woman do her um, 
marbling. So we're going to be doing that coming up. We've got that. We've got um, ice dyeing with Procyon dyes. Um, I'm going to use Jacquard dyes for the marbling. And then I'm going to do some more indigo dyeing. And that's, let me see, do you have to put your painted fabric on interfacing? The main, the only reason you do interfacing is to give stability to whatever you're working on. If you're doing heavy thread painting, yes, put interfacing on the back. I did mine just so that it would be easier to paint it, you know, because, but you don't always have to do that. Only if you're concerned, you know, actually Midland, that's a good question. You use soda ash for the fabric when you do the Procyon dyeing, but for the marbling, she mentioned alum and I looked it up and every place talked about alum. So when my daughter, she went to, they went to a Mennonite um, grocer on the eastern shore of Maryland, and I knew they'd have alum because they make pickles, and uh, they do a lot of canning, and alum is used in canning, so I said, she happened to say, do you want anything from Byers? Byers? I think Spires. Um, in fact, I know I can tell you for sure what it is. It's on the eastern shore, and if you ever get a chance to go there, Byers, B-Y-L-E-R-S. It's a Mennonite grocer big grocer and kind of tourist thing on the eastern shore of maryland up near delaware and um she got me some alum and i'm glad because i looked for the price i priced it on amazon and it was eleven dollars so she got it much cheaper for like three dollars so yay that was a good thing so anyway um, but I've got some pictures of their trip. So these are some things that I've got coming up. And the reason I'm mentioning all this, besides trying to get you excited about some things I'm going to try to do this summer, I'm also going to make paper. And we'll see how that goes. So um, I got my supplies. I'm gathering all my supplies for paper making. And I, I will tell you all about it. And, you know, I, I like to document everything I do. And, um, but the reason I'm telling you all this is I really have to get my room clean. I can't work in this kind of clutter and I don't know where everything is. A little bit of this is here and a little bit of that is there and a little bit, you know, and you start to realize you spend more time hunting and searching for things than you do working on them. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I said to you that Mark and I were going to do something fun. We're going to go see Top Gun. I'm kind of surprised in a way we're going to go see Top Gun, but we've heard so much about the special effects. And I said, Mark, I want to do something special with you. What if we go see Top Gun? He said, well, if we're going to go see it, let's see IMAX. So we're going to go see the IMAX showing of Top Gun, and that should be pretty fun. And he said, well, is that a movie you want to see? I said, look, as long as I get popcorn, I don't care what movie I see. So Linda McCollum, hi, sweetheart. We just showed off some of your beautiful artwork, hon. So, okay. So now we've talked about things that I've got coming up. I can't wait. Now I do want to weave a basket with you too. So that's another thing for this summer. I love summers because I want to keep that summer playtime. When my kids were little, we'd always pick out a new craft or art project for them to try every summer. Have something fun to look at. Oh, thank you. You saw Al Pacino. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. So, but Linda, it's wonderful that you're here. So now I'll give you some instructions. I, when I was looking at quilting art, see, one of the days, there was a woman named Becky Campbell who was on the quilting art show with um, Susan Brubaker Knapp. And I love her. She is super and, and lives probably an hour from me in North Carolina. Okay. But Becky Campbell says she does what she calls innovative applique. And so when I saw this, I thought, I want to tell them this right away. Because, yes, happy birthday, Miss Linda. Happy birthday. I won't tell you her age, 
but it's two of the same number and it's upwards of six. So, but I'm not telling her age because, you know, it's not nice to tell somebody else's age, right? <laughs> but happy birthday, Arlinda. And I was telling them to, I finally finished writing you back. I loved your email, hon. So, okay, let me give you this story really quickly. She says, traditional applique can have too many steps in it. So she tried to streamline it. And I love her method. Can I get an autograph? Who would you want me to get it from? <laughs> so, um, but anyway, oh, Jody, that's so sweet. But anyway, she says, make a master pattern that never gets cut up. And that is critical to do that. And you know what I would do? Let me do this. Okay, so I made up the drawing with some information. And what I would do then, let me see if I have a marker. Here we go. A marker, colored marker. And what I would do is mark on it, master. Mark on it, master. It's really, really important. And you know what? If you ever buy a pattern for a quilt and you really like it and it has certain pattern pieces to cut out and you like it, make copies of whatever you're going to cut up so that you always have the, the master. Okay? Ah, uh, that's wonderful. You can't watch any? Oh, no. It comes on my PBS channel. So if you are able to get PBS, you can check and see if they have it. I have, I pay $5 a month to my PBS station um, because I want to support them. And with that, I get passports. So I can go on passport and watch the different shows like that. So, oh, that's right. That means... No, Linda was born July 3rd, if I'm mis not mistaken. But boy, is that close to July 4th. I was due to have my daughter in the middle of October, and two weeks went by and nothing. And I said, I refuse to have a Halloween baby. I said, I'm going to jump off the kitchen table if this child isn't born. And she ended up being born October 29th. And, oh, this is so cute. I will have to find the picture at some point. But we cleaned out a pumpkin, put it, lined it with a plastic bag, and put her in the pumpkin. I said, it's the only time in her life she'll fit in a pumpkin. So I have a picture of that somewhere. Okay. So innovative applique. You make a master pa pattern. Just like Miss Jody does, she dashes her lines to show what part lays under something else, if you do have it that way. And then you know then when you see the dashed line... Ooh, leave extra fabric for a seam allowance. Now, where she's very different, she irons the freezer paper onto the front, the good part of the fabric. Oh, that's great, Marsha. They're the same, they have the same birthday. And so if you iron the freezer paper on the front, now I was a little surprised by that. And here is a piece, and I've partially folded it under. And I thought, how do you fold it under? I thought having the freezer paper on the inside gave you an edge to fold it under on. She said, no, if you've ironed the freezer paper tight firmly to the fabric, it, it acts the same way. It makes it easy to turn it over along that line. So how cool is that? Now, I did this, I did a page of, I did, do not also put on this a master. Don't use your pattern page either. Make a copy on, now let's say you don't, your printer is out of ink, you don't have a printer. Then what I would do is take and trace the pattern on another piece of paper. 
you know, put a piece of paper on top, trace through what you can see. Now, I do want to tell you one thing. I put the dots to remind you that you need a 3 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, 3 eighths um, seam allowance to fold under. But when you go to cut the freezer paper pieces out, cut on the solid line. The dots are just to remind you, oops, I need a seam allowance on everything, okay? So, now let me get my AppliQuick tools that Miss Nadine sent me, that sweetheart. She shouldn't have done it, but she was so sweet. Okay, so here are my AppliQuick tools. I'm going to turn the camera down and show you how it works because here are here are the ones I've already turned under. See the freezer paper on the top? And there, they're turned under. So let me show you. Now, I have all of mine. I'm turning all parts of it under. And normally, if I put piece one by piece two, let me see. Here's two. You could just put that fabric under that one. See that? But I, I don't know. I just decided to make them independent of each other. But, oh, let me get my tools out and show you how easy this is. Okay. So I put any kind of glue stick you can use. Good old school, school glue. You can also use white glue and just put little dots in it. I've just gotten so used to, I've gotten so used to the glue stick of late. I love it. And you just, and if, let's say you don't have the Apple Quick tools. I mean, they do make it very nice. But if you don't have the Apple Quick tools, you can use a seam ripper. Anything, watch this. You could put some glue on here. The Applicant tools make easy, quick work of it. But you could use a seam ripper. Anything just to turn that edge. And you see how, for the most part, that freezer paper makes it very easy to turn under. Now, right here, what I'm going to do is get off the excess fabric. When you're trying to fold too much fabric against itself, it makes it really hard. So, now let me... But you don't even have to have a seam ripper if you can use your fingers carefully. So, what I'm going to do is quickly put... And oh, another thing I wanted to show you, when you have an inside corner like this and you know you're going to be folding it inwards, go ahead and clip your edges. It allows the fabric to move more easily. It allows it to fold more smoothly because you're not fighting against the tension in the fabric. And if you get a piece that didn't quite lay right, pull it up again. Push it back down. Now, if you can, sometimes I noticed when I did this, I saw a little bit of the freezer paper. Then just take and pull the fabric back like that to the edge. But the nicest thing is once this you're, you're done tacking this under, you can just peel off the freezer paper. And you don't have the problem that I have right now with the neutral blooms where I'm trying to take the freezer paper out and it's stretching out the fabric because you're, you're trying to sew around more than half of it and then pull that freezer paper loose. And that's tricky. So I love this method. I think it is wonderful. And right there, it wasn't laying perfectly smooth. So I just scrunched it down. Now I'm going to take and cut the excess off here. Oh, and I was Thursday night. We saw Miss Lisa Capen. She is so cool. And I meant to go and watch her live stream on Friday at noon. And guess what? I got so busy. I end up ended up for 
getting, so I'm going to have to go back and watch it, because she's been doing a really good block series, and that's Lisa Cape and Quilt. She's amazing. So I'm so sorry, Miss Lisa, that I missed your Friday. All right, so now I have all of it pressed over, and then I just get my iron and press it. Come on, iron. Give it a good press like this, and there it is. All right, so let me... Okay, here we go. Let me show you what I've got. All right. And I also put a peek, this, the notes that I took from watching Becky Campbell's show, I put it on our site. And if you don't belong to our site, just send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com. Let me see if I can write this in here. All right. I'm so glad you like that necklace. Thank you. All right. Let me see. Here we go. Okay. Our time to quilt. And it's at twc. Whoop. C.com. And if you just send me an email saying, I'd like that balloon pattern, I will be happy to send it to you along with the instructions. All right. So this is what I've got. I've got what I want to, I wanted to teach you this applique method. And I thought, we'll put it into something that you might think is fun. Hi, Pat. It's so good to see you. Pat's looking at a new condo. And she's so happy to be off the mountain so she can get internet service and all of that good stuff. So, hi, Pat. All right. So, now, so here is the master. Now, one thing I did was took a piece of this golden threads paper. See how translucent that is? Now, if you were good at using your printer, you could print off this picture on it onto that golden threads paper but it's so gossamer you would probably have to tack it to a piece of printer if you want and oh gosh I cross my fingers I hope you get it sweetheart so now then here I just instead of Instead of printing it, I thought, mm, I want to make this easy. I don't want to get the paper stuck in the printer. And so I just drew it on by hand. And then what I'm going to do, and I put this little to remind me to pin this onto the fabric. Oop, let me get it down here. To pin it onto the fabric. Now, I looked for just... Some sky fabric with no real clouds in it. Couldn't really find one. And I was in a hurry, so I grabbed this. But you know if you want to add clouds to any fabric, you can put some white clouds on, but you can use cheesecloth. You can use organza. You can use cotton ball. In fact, you know what? Hold on. I brought down a cotton ball the other day. I thought it was right over here, but now I'm not seeing it. But if you had, I had a cotton ball um, out of a medicine thing, but I don't see it. But you could even use a cotton ball and glue it down. When you glue down something like that, I recommend you use a tacky type glue because you want it on there solid. Then you can always do hand stitches over it or you can do... Um, hand stitches, or you can do machine, a couple little machine packing stitches. All right, so this is what I had to do to get this set up. I've got my translucent, okay? And then I pin it on, so look, it's like a book. I can open it up, lay things in, put things back, okay? Now... Then I took and I thought, I want some really pretty balloon type fabric. So 
what do I do? How, you know, I got out a, a, a bunch of fabric and thought, that's a lot of work to sew that fabric, all those little stripes together. Well, guess what I did instead? I took a piece of nice white fabric, one that had was a PDF scrap, and I put freezer paper on the back of it. Now, why did I put freezer paper on the back of it? I did that because it would be sturdy. The inks wouldn't run through the back of it because that acts as a barrier. And it makes it so much easier to paint. Then I knew I had fabric markers. I've got several different kinds of fabric markers. And I took... And I just started painting stripes on the fabric with my fabric markers. Okay. And I worked out how I was going to do the fabric. But see, with, with having the freezer paper on the back, look how it just lays nice and still for me to color on. And then it doesn't come through the back. So this is a scrap I had left over. And you know, freezer paper will then peel right off. And you can use the freezer paper a few more times, too. So I did I did my balloon fabric with a fabric marker. Here are some of the scraps so you can kind of see how I did it. Here is a pretty good scrap. So I didn't have an orange with this set, so I tried to make my own by doing red lightly over yellow. But I just made my pattern up this way. And then I drew my... I drew, I actually, I didn't draw. I took the freezer paper, put it on top of the fabric, because that's what makes this one different. You lay it right on top. All right. Now, let me get, okay, here, this glue. All right. Now, so I got this, and I made all, uh, let me show you this by laying these on. Here's piece one. Here's piece three. I made all in here a little tiny sliver for piece five. So that's going to be my balloon. And there's a reason I did it that way too, because when I add, I'm going to do a fake trapunto on the back. Now, here is piece number seven. Let me see which way. Mm -hmm. I need to cut this out. I don't think I cut it out quite enough. But I'm going to, let's see. I want to cut it to match my pattern line. And somehow I failed to um, cut it out enough. And at first I thought I was going to do brown. But then I changed my mind. And now this is on... Yeah, this is on freezer paper. Oh, that's why it didn't look right. Well, I just turned it over. All right. Then here is, I've got a couple more pieces. This is going to be the basket of my balloon. And so what I need to do is cut this smaller. Because remember, I made the, the, fat, I made the pattern pieces larger than they're supposed to be so that I would remember to cut it out correctly. So let me do one thing. I gotta put a put the heat back on. Sometimes freezer paper, if it lets loose, just touch the iron to it. It's something about the, the waxy fabric that I mean the waxiness that makes it adhere to fabric. And when that's all gone then it won't stick anymore but until then you can use it several different times all right so here's my basket okay and the freezer paper is on the outside now with this i just get my glue stick and i'm going to go ahead and do the whole all the edges at once because i'm going to put it together pretty good what i would recommend you do Cut off the corners so you don't have too much fabric being tucked under. Like that. All right. Now, just tuck these under. And the freezer paper on the outside gives you a guide 
for how far to tuck it under. This is the top of the basket. And, okay, now this goes in here. And, whoops, nope. And the one thing is, be careful gluing too much at a time because the glue air dries pretty quick and then it's not sticky anymore. So, maybe I shouldn't have done the whole thing then, but, okay. So, this tucks down here. And this here. Okay, so here is my little basket already. Now, with this one, this piece is this number nine right here. And what I'm going to do is cut this down to just enough to tuck it. But I'm going to leave the bottom part so it can tuck in. And let me show you how I'm doing this. Okay. Okay. So all I have to do is just cut along the top so I can tuck that over. All right. If you have any questions, just write them. Um, all tiny houses are really sweet. I don't know. I worry. I see Marsha in a tiny house. But I worry. I just don't know if I could give up enough of my stuff to get a tiny house. But it would be a nice thought. Reduce, reduce the, your clutter and go for it. Okay. I saw the cutest thing on the, um, Quilting Arts the other day where somebody was making tiny little houses. And she does it while she's sitting on the couch at night watching TV. All right. So now we're ready to, we've got all of our components made. Let's work on this background. And I want this to be very easy for you. Okay, put move this pin here so I can work right here. Here we go. All right. Oh, and I'm going to try Jody's suggestion since I don't like messing up my new ironing board cover. I'm going to use Miss Jody's suggestion of ironing a piece of freezer paper onto the ironing board surface so that way you have protected you have protected your ironing board surface and then when you're all done you just peel it off isn't that a neat idea I thought that was brilliant that's where y'all give me so many more ideas than I ever give y'all and it just shows too that there is knowledge in numbers. We can all share. Always feel free to share your techniques, your ideas, because we learn that way. All right. So here, I'm going to pull up my overlay, and I'm going to lay this piece right here. This piece is my, it's supposed to look like a flowery meadow, okay? Okay. So what I'm going to do on this, whoops, let me try something really quickly. I'm going to, I'm going to tuck under this edge because I really don't want to have to go, come along and do a lot of work on this. This is supposed to be very fast and fun and easy. All right. Well, I love making these little projects because you can get them done in no time. It doesn't become something that drags on for months. And they're fun. You can hang them up or sit them somewhere and enjoy them for summer. And then when winter comes, look for one of your winter projects. Now I'm going to come along and press this. Okay. And I will show you why. All right. So now we're going to come along and put this here, okay? And all I have to do, I might have to get a different bottle of this. This is the one that's almost empty, and I had it upside down so it would be easier to pour out. But let's just get a different one. One thing I do when I'm getting 
low on a bottle, I'll put the order in for the next one. For right now, I'm only going to put some, come on. I'm only going to put some little dots of glue along about an inch down. And I will tell you why in a moment. All right. So now this is going to come right here. All right, I'll cut the excess off right here. Because, see, I'm just going to take a neutral thread, and then I'm just going to stitch on this when I'm done placing everything. Now it's the time for this one. It's already been tucked in. All right. And let's see. I'm going to tuck it under. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Then now you'll see why I did not glue this yet. I'm going to put in some dots of glue here. Then I'm going to put the next layer in. Okay. And then the final layer is this one. And let me see. I forgot when I trim this. I might leave this raw. You know, this is not that big of a piece. So let me. All right. And I didn't glue down this edge. And now this is when it's good to pull this back. It goes right here. Okay. It goes right here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's your drawing. But that's pretty good. All right. All right. So now I'm going to come back and put a little few drops of glue here. Then a few drops of glue here. And put this down. And I always like... And I like to store my glue like this if possible because it keeps the glue at ready to come out, be used. But I like to then come back and press down my background. It's just that easy. Okay? Now, I'll bring this back down. And I'll go ahead and put my pen back here because I've already done that part. This is just to give a little interest in the background. The, the big excitement is right here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start laying the pattern pieces, okay, for the balloon. This is the biggie. So three goes here, two, and one. Let's start with these three first. All right. So one goes there, and see how you can use this overlay to make sure you've got it in the right place. Okay, so that goes there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to very carefully, very carefully... I'm not going to use a, well, I can use a pencil. Let me see. Where are my pencils? I was tempted to use an ink pen, but that that's a little risky. So once I know, yep, it's in the right place, then I'm going, I'm going to come on the inside. Because that way, once I put them all in place, but see now, I can, I, there's a light pencil line there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paper, freezer paper off the front of this. I'll get my glue and I'll put my dots of glue down this piece like this. And then come match it up with this pencil line. And when I put my next piece on, the pencil line will kind of shield 
And I thought, I wanted to teach you the applique method. And I thought, why not do something that's a lot of fun? So, now let me see how it looks. Now, see? It looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, so now I'm going to get my iron. I checked it, double-checked it, so I can press it down. That just helps speed up the glue setting. Now I need piece number two. Now if I set this one up right, then number two should be very easy. And what I have to do is just make sure I go up high enough. So now I'm going to peel off the freezer paper. But now look, see, now you get easy fold-over lines. So simply. And the nicest thing is that... It's going to be so easy to sew down with the machine or by hand. Now, normally I like to sew this by hand, but not today. This is just a fun little thing. Oh, wow. I, I'm, I'm matching up the fabric. I guess that's good. I wonder if I want to put it this. I might see. Do I want to put it a little bit off or what? Hmm. Oh, and I just realized... I need another piece of fabric for the bottom of the balloon. So I might not have that to put in place today. Because the balloon has like a band at the bottom. And I totally forgot that. I might see if I can find one. All right. So this is goes this way. If in doubt, check it out and see. Let me see. No, nope, it does go. No, that doesn't look right either. Let me see. Three. Ah, it goes. It does go the wide end. Okay. So now I'm gonna come in here and put some more glue down. Actually, this gets a little wide in the middle. So there we go. Oh, and make sure you got one at the top. Okay. The anchor points. Make sure you have. All right. Now, if you're wondering, well, what about the little lines in between? That, I will have that remedy in just a moment. It looks like I cut, I folded that fabric in a little touch much, but that's okay. We'll work it out. Now, we have these three pieces left to put here, put in here. Let me clean up some of this mess so I don't get confused what's left. All right, so I'm going to peel off. Number four goes this way. I will peel off the freezer paper. Okay, here we go. Get my glue. Okay, I'm going to put it here. Let me see on my pattern. Okay. And these were done, I made these two pieces of fabric separately, and so the, the pattern doesn't fully line up, because I was, you know, just, I didn't draw both, across both fabrics at the same time, but I think that, in fact, makes me wonder if I should pull these a little off-center, but I like it. All right, then I'll peel the paper off here. And this one's going to go up here. So this piece doesn't come down as far. And I put some pictures of balloons to give you ideas on the site. So you can make your balloon in any shape you want. Let me peel this up real quickly and cut this edge off. Okay, and put another little bit of glue right here. All right, there we go. All right. Now it needs to come down just a touch. All right. So now I'm going to need a piece. Whoops, this I need to get this to blend in better. 
Let me peel this up. Uh -huh. Let me open this one. I worried about how was I going to get this to blend in. All right. There we go. That's much better. All right. Then this what this um basket is going to be right down here. Right here. Okay. Now let me press that down. All right. So, and right here, let me see. Oh, I like this. I'm going to borrow this. I'm going to borrow this. From my other project. And let me put some glue on this. And this covers, the nice thing about this is it covers up, hold on, the base of the balloon. All right. Then I've got to make strings that connect the balloon to the, the, balloon to the basket. I'm going to draw them on right now. But what I'm going to do is get some of my floss and you do the floss to make the stitches. So, okay, now I've got this balloon here. Now what do we do? And luckily, I've, my, my clouds are already there. But if I needed to put clouds on my, on my background, what I would do is slip them under here, but have whatever fabric I cut out or the cheesecloth or whatever put here. So now I take this over to the sewing machine. Boy, thank you, Miss Jody, for teaching me about putting that um, that freezer paper down because some of the glue did ooze out and the freezer paper saved the ironing cover. All right, so now let me bring you over here. Let me bring you down here. All right. And turn on my machine. And I've got... It's a little light. Let me get a touch darker gray. When I love gray because it blends into everything. But you still need to be careful. Do you need a more medium gray? See this one? I'll show you the difference. Here's a gray, but it reads white. Whoops. Here's a gray, but it reads white. Here, you don't even see this other gray. Look at this. See how that blends in? So just choose your fabric wisely, and then you won't have to worry. All right. So I'm going to quickly thread this needle. Thread the machine. And All right. Here we go. Okay. Now, this was interesting, but I actually liked it. This is Becky Campbell's idea, and she just said, let me pull this above like closer. Okay. She said she just takes and stitches right on the top. Instead of worrying about doing fancy sewing, she just drops her stitch length down just a little bit. And then she stitches just inside the edge. And they said, yeah, it's kind of like the modern thing, you know. And uh, if you did them by hand, you try to hide them. But when you do it by machine, just do it. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, you'll hear the needle, but that's just because it's going through... 
you know, that blue folded over fabric. Mm. And I'm just going to outline stitch all of this. And I have to do this because I, I can't wait to show you the next process. All right. Let me just kind of quickly get around here. I might not be able to do it all, but I at least want to do part of it so I can show you what's going to happen. I was fascinated with this, and I said, yep. Now, not this edge stitching, but the way of putting the freezer paper on the outside. I'm going. This is going to be my method from now on. And if y'all weren't here and I wasn't rushing, I would try to make sure if I were going to sew it with machine stitches, I would try to make sure that my stitching was straighter. Okay. So now, let me go back over here, come up this one. Now, if I'd slid the edges of the balloon under each other, then I would have less sewing to do. But there's a reason that I wanted to do it this way, and I think you'll understand why. Okay. This is pretty easy and a whole lot faster than hand applique, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm doing on both sides of each of these pieces because they're independent pieces. I would only have to do one stitching line if I had tucked an edge under. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. It might help make your decision for you. All right, let's see. Almost there really doesn't take long. This is just a sweet little, sweet, small little piece here. Okay. Okay, one more seam line. And then... And while I'm so close by, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this basket because I don't want to lose it, have it fall off. Actually, I'm going to do a couple little things while I'm down here. I love the needle down. makes it a lot easier to go around corners. All right. Now, so I've done the basket. Then what I'm going to do is come back over here. Now, you could, if you're going to stitch this, you could use matching thread. Might be a nice thing to do, but I'm in a hurry. I got a lot to do. I'm just doing a little stitch right along the edge, and that, that way everything will be firmly secured down. Okay. Let me leap over the balloon here. That just reminded me of a story. I used to be a docent. And you know what? Before I stitch this, it's coming out a little too straight. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do it something. And I'm going to kind of tuck it in a little. Let me see if I can pull it loose. There are no straight lines in nature. Okay. So now what I can do is tuck this down more. All right. So let me start sewing here. Much better. Now let me pull up over here and do it again. I just didn't see that until I got ready to sew it. And didn't want to sew it down if it wasn't going to be right. Okay, pull it loose, tuck it under more. 
this is a, the reason I love being an art quilter because I can change things on the fly. Editing, editing, new ideas, make it better. And I love that. All right, let me pull this down. Okay, I've got this part. Now let me get this part down. Well, let me start with this part. All right. I want to pull this further down here, smooth it. There we go. Just make sure with your fingers you smooth it before the needle gets there. Yeah, this is going to look a whole lot better. All right. This is great. Okay. So I think... Let me bring you back up here. I think this is going to look a lot better. Let's see. Yes, that does look a lot better. This is a little wonky. I think I would make sure to have those. Maybe what I should have done is to color the fabric. Is taken each piece and done it separately and kind of coordinated them. But you know what? I'm just going to enjoy it like it is. All right, here we go. Now what you want to do, every stage of working, whether it's art quilt or whether it's a pieced quilt, whoops, make sure the camera shows the viewer. <laughs> okay. But every stage when you're working on a quilt, your iron is your best friend. Because you press it, get everything laying down. There we go. Okay. So that's good. Now everything, you've got a nice flat surface to work on. Michelle the Quilter's back. So good to see you. And hello, Becca Bradley. Oh, I know. You got, we, I, one thing I try to get everybody to do is just take a deep breath and relax. Because you know what? This is playtime. This is not serious. We have plenty more serious things to do. This is playtime. And if we don't allow ourselves to just play, then we get very boring. All right. This is piece number three. What I've done with this is gone to the steam of scene two. And with the steam of scene two, I've ironed these pieces. I've ironed steam of scene two pattern pieces on batting. Hi, Carol. It's so good to see you. Today's Linda McCollum's birthday, too. So that's a special thing. But this way, we can take, we're doing a, a easy trapunto. Okay. So we put this the we put the pieces of batting on like this. Now I need piece four. And I'm just peeling off the paper on the back of the steam seam two. And then I'm gonna place it. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Okay. So we we'll place the batting on the back of this. Okay. All right, now I need piece three, and I actually did two of all of these so that, and this is just scrap batting, just plain scrap batting, and I place it. Now, if you notice, the pe if the pieces look a little too big in places, trim it down a little, and I'll tell you why. It's good to have it just under the size of the original pattern pieces because you want to give it room to give it the trapunto look. All right, now I need piece two. Okay, come on two. And I ironed them, cut them out last night. Then we place them. This needs to be cut away just a tiny bit right along here. You don't want them to be as big as the main pattern. You want them just a little narrower. Okay. All 
All right. Then I need piece number one. Here it is. All right. Piece number one it needs to be just a touch smaller. Until you get everything sewn on, sometimes you're never quite sure how wide to make it, how big to make it. All right. Here we go. All right. Now, I do think I want this to be really puffy. So what I'm going to do is come in here and cut this one a little touch smaller. And I'm going to cut it on the paper before I take the paper off because it just makes it that much easier. But I want to make it even smaller than the first one because that gives the first one good space to really puff up. So I'm taking off mm, about an eighth of an inch on both sides so that it's even smaller than the first piece of batting I put down. All right. Whoops, come on. And I don't have the right backing for this, but I want to show you what this does. So I've got a little idea of how to do that. Here's piece number five that I'll put over here. But what you have to do, if you want two layers of batting to really make it puffy, each one has to have their own piece of steam seam because otherwise they'll shift so much they won't really work. Now let me see how this one, I think this one will do. I was wondering if I was going to cut that. I'll cut down the end just a touch. Okay. And then piece number four, I'm going to trim this down. Okay, and trim this over here. And this, by doing two layers of batting and one is narrower than the other, it will really help give it that rounded look that you want with your balloon. Okay, this one goes here. And now this one. Okay, trim, trim this down a little. Almost there. And when I go to stitch this, I'm going to stitch it with a longer stitch length because... Um, I'm going to have to take it back out to do the correct batting and backing. All right, let me get this apart. So, so good to see Michelle the Quilter back. And Michelle the Quilter, if you want to join our group or if you'd like a copy of this pattern, please um, just email me. And it's up in the body of the chat, but it's Our Time to Quilt at TWC.com. All right, here we go. This is piece number three. I'm trimming this just a little more. I would go get a piece of backing, but I don't have the correct piece of batting down here. So that's why I'm just going to do a little... Um, a little show and tell, and then later go ahead and do it correctly. Okay. Whoops. Come on. Come on. All right. Here we go. All right. So now let me show you this up closer. Do you see how I have the, I have the batting? And I just use my scraps. You don't have to, you know, spend a lot of money. Just use your scraps. And I've put them in place. I like them where they are. So now I press them. And I press them so it will activate the steam seam. I do notice one thing. I can't have it too wide down here. Let me trim some of this off. 
And it's got to stay in the parameter of the balloon. And then up here, I might have to do a little touch of trimming. A little bit there. Okay. So I've got to make sure everything fits where I'm going to do the sewing. And I'll show you why. All right, and then later on, I'm going to make a little piece, maybe, maybe, piece for the stuffing for the basket. All right, so let me grab a scrap piece of fabric here. I'll grab a scrap of this muslin, and I have a scrap piece of the batting. So after you've glued these on, okay, anything that you want puffy, you've got the batting on. Then what you're going to do, pretend this is a full-size sheet of batting, but I'm just going to lay it across here for now, but it would cover the whole thing. Then pretend that this is a nice piece of backing for the fabric like this. All right, then let me grab some pins and okay. I'm grabbing some pins, and what I'm going to do, okay, lay it smoothly. I'm going to turn the whole thing over very gently, making sure everything, all the layers are smooth and even. And then I'm going to quickly put some pins in. And like I said, the basket is a little wonky. I might redo a couple pieces. I mean, the balloon is because of the fabric, so I might redo that a little. What I could do is just go back and use solid fabrics. I was trying to be very fancy, but I didn't realize that by doing these two pieces separately, I was way off. All right, so what I'm doing, anytime you're going to do um, quilting on something, you know, you pin it really good. You want everything smooth and to end up smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to take it back to the machine because I want to show you what this looks like. All right. Yeah, I'll find a way to redo those because I think this is a cute little thing and I'd like to keep it. So now come back here. Let me bring you back down. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we have a groups I.O., which allows us to keep having fun, write, share things, write things, send pictures of our favorite things. So, and, and any of my patterns I make are free, and I love sharing them. All right, so I'm going to make my stitch length longer. I'm going to make it a 2.8, or, yeah, 2.8. Then come in. And I'm going to stitch not on the fabric, the pattern, but just off of it. Okay. And this, now let's say, you know, because I'm doing all the quilting. So I'll probably quilt around the clouds and all this. But I'm going to quilt right off, not on the fabric, but off the balloon fabric kind of like a stitch in the ditch, but you can even do a little thread width further away if you wish. But stitch off the fabric and outline the balloon. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've gone all the way around it. What I'm going to do now is come in here and stitch in between these sections of balloon, okay? Try to avoid the fabric, just stitch in that little ditch. Okay. 
just let it go around like that. Now I'll come across this way under the basket, under the bottom part. Then I'm going to go back up this one. And the trapunto might be a little more noticeable if I had a smaller stitch. But I want to be able to take these stitches out. All right, so now what I want to do, okay, come on, there we go, all right, let me get over here, okay, there we go, right down in between those two fabrics best I can. The nice thing is when they come together at the bottom of the balloon, it's real easy to get over to the next little rib, I guess you'll, we'll call it. And then our last seam. Come right up between piece number one and piece number two. Piece number one and piece number two. Okay. Now, let's see what we have. Hopefully, if we did it right, okay, let me pull it out, come on, all right, so now let's check, and do you see how you've got the stitching, I'll show you on the back, this is what it looks like, and so on the front, it gives dimension. And that's just a very quick and easy way to give to dimension to your work. I wish the fabric did better. If every rib was off, then you'd go, oh, that's the pattern of the balloon. So I will work on, maybe I just have to redo these two ribs. I think that's what I'll do. So anyway, here we go. And so then... What I would do is for the quilting, I would do thread painting type stitches down in the grass. And then in the background here, I would emphasize rolling little heels. I would outline stitch the mountains in the far back. And then I would quilt all the different clouds. Okay. Then I would come back in with some floss or pearl cotton and do the lines on the quilt and maybe even draw in or thread paint in a little person in the gondola. So here is, there is that. So that's a long way to go to show you how to do a new applique pattern. Let me get my lamp out of the way here. It's a long way to go to show you a new applique method, but I think it's worth it. So, do you, hopefully, do you have any questions about how this is done? And I like that I painted, but you know, mark with markers my own fabric, but I do have to correct this part. It makes it look like it's falling down. <laughs> but in that little bit of time, you could take and send this to someone. Does someone need their day brightened? You, that could be a nice little gift. You could write, embroider some a little saying in the sky, whatever you want. So I think pretty much that's about all I had for you today. We are, isn't it a great method? Thank you to Becky Campbell and to um, Susan Brubaker Knapp, all the people on um, Quilting Arts for that show, and Becky Campbell, look her up. Very smart woman with a very good technique. Thank you to Miss Nadine for my applique so I could display the best way to turn those edges over. And applique glue, which made short work of all the gluing. So anyway, I just thought I would show you a new method. Next week when we come, when I'm back, I've got to finish up the um, stained glass quilt, fish quilt, and 
the fabric that I painted that I cut into squares, I need to have that. I need to figure out what, how am I going to sew it back together? But what fun. We just took and painted stripes on fabric with two different paint varieties. One being the jacquard and another being just plain acrylic and fabric medium. And painted stripes on fabric. Then when it was all dry and you pressed it with a pressing cloth, to set the color, then I just started cutting strips, and from the strips I cut squares, and then we're going to sew it back together. And these are just fun, quick, easy projects for good old summertime, because remember, summertime is the time to play, okay? Time to see if you can find a new method or a new technique that really s strikes your fancy. All right. You have met Sue. Oh, I love her to bits. Do you know she lives only an hour away from me now? So oh, she lives um, Chapel Hill, and that's not very far. It's on, my, on the way to the lake that I love so much. Let's go to show and tell. I for, almost forgot show and tell. But there is my little balloon. And, I mean, talk about a quick and easy landscape. Is this just the quickest and easiest? So there we go. All right, and thank you to Jody for that technique of ironing freezer paper on your surface to be protected. So that, that worked out great. All right, here, let me get the light off so we can do show and tell. This is my favorite part. I love this. All right, let me turn my camera. Very good. This down. All right, now we're going to go to show and tell. Kaz, it's so great to see you. Oh my gosh, I'm loving all the different people I'm seeing. And guess what? Today is our celebration of our 3,000 subscribers. So just a reminder, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed any part of this. And... um. Please subscribe so you and hit the bell so you won't miss any of our episodes. And just to show you real quick, this is the pattern I drew out. And this are the pieces to the pattern to make it easy for you to make to make your own balloon. And as you can see, all these amazing, amazing photos made it very tempting for me to try something maybe a little difficult but what fun sometimes you just gotta go with it because it's so much fun but balloons are bright and happy we love those all right let me push escape come on let me close this all right, let's go back and see what you've sent. Let me see. B. Hepworth. Let's look at her beautiful great-grandbabies. This is her newest great-grandson. Oh, he's so precious. Here is her beautiful English Rose granddaughter, great-granddaughter. Lovely girl. All right, now let's see who's next. Miss Betty, let's see. Oh, yes, a beautiful swan. I'll just show that briefly. I need to take it off, but it's so beautiful. It's hard to say goodbye to it. So here we go. Let's see who we have. Miss Charlene has a beautiful new great-grandson. Oh, he is beautiful. Beautiful little boy. Okay, let's see. Next. Debbie. Oh, yes, I love her. These are all wonderful projects, and I love the fact that she put such... She came out of the picture with her embellishments. Look at this. I love how she used the string to make it look like the beach fencing. Wonderful. 
I love when people use creativity. Here is our winter landscape. She did a great job on that. And, oh, I just noticed she's done a partial stone wall here. How cool is that? Awesome. I love when you add your own touches. I love when you change up any pattern I might suggest and make it your own. And this is gorgeous. I love, I don't know where she, if she invented this pattern or if she found it, but it's beautiful. And I love the grunge dots on that. Is that perfect or what? And here is a wonderful beach landscape. Love it. I love the embellishment, little stones and shells on the beach. Beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. That's Debbie Hodges. Gorgeous work. Okay, Miss Dolores. Yes, look at this. This is so sweet. Look at that thread painting. I wonder if she used a filing um, yarn. It is gorgeous. That's a lot, a lot of work and beautifully done. Beautiful. Okay, let's go back to Jeannie. Let me see. Oh, yeah, we've seen her at the center of Miss um, Jody's quilt. Beautiful block. Okay. And let me see. Our Miss Jody. Uh, um, this is something she has been working on during her chemo, which I think is just beautiful. And here is the block of the month, the quilt show block of the month that she has been working on. Just beautiful. All right. Now, let's see. Kathy Boyd. I love this statement. Finished is better than perfect. And I am crazy about flying geese lately. I don't know why. I just am. I'll have to do some flying geese. All right. Let me see. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, Kim... And, uh, let me see. Oh, I think I did get a new picture. Yes, I got a couple new things for Miss Mary. Here, she did the painting of stripes on fabric. And look at the directional, the, the movement she gave the fabric with the black lines. Isn't that awesome? So she is letting her creativity just pop out. And I love it. I love it. It looks like it might even be a piece of old linen. And how wonderful to give it that new life. Then here is her Easter egg we did. And I love how she put this sunshine up here coming down on her, on her flowers and butterflies. She did her butterflies by that stained glass method of sewing the fabric on top and cutting away to reveal what's below. Now, let me see. Can I get something? No, think, don't think I did here. Um, nope, I've got to, I have not gone through my um, files lately. I need to get busy on that. But when I'm talking about the stained glass, this is Nazra, or Nazi's, um, beautiful butterfly she did. And it's kind of a reverse applique where this was the, the wonderful brown and white fabric was put on first, the black was put over it, and then you cut away where you want. And that's lovely. Way to go, Miss Nazzy. All right. Is there something else? If I miss anything, I do apologize. I think Miss Rihanna... Oh, yes, we saw these with her. What That is the back of a quilt. That is amazing. And uh, I just want to go back and show you this. Look at the movement that adding those blocks like she did. Look at the movement it gives the quilt. That is brilliant. That's a stroke of genius. But aren't these wonderful? Very, very nice work, Rihanna. All right, now, Cheryl, let me see. Let me just peek. Okay. All right, let me see. I think that's it for right now. So, I for, well, I have two more things. We had our wonderful pink party in honor of Miss Jody's wonderful progress. 
And here is Nadine from Germany, our wonderful, beautiful member. And she wishing Jody good, um, good wishes to finish her treatment. And then here is Miss Betty Middleton. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love her pool with the little pond right behind. Oh, how nice that is. And here's Miss B. Hepworth of England with her pink on. Miss Debbie Hodges. Miss Dolores. And, and no, she did not dye the kitty. She did it with Photoshop. <laughs> and look, Bonnie sent a beautiful pink flower to show that she's thinking of Miss Jody. Whoops, I better check what else I've got. I sometimes add things to the list, and, uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, here's Miss Jeannie with her wonderful pink top in support of Jody. And there's Miss Jody with her pink wig that our Marcia sent her. Isn't that cute? Love that. And then Miss Melanie sent a picture of her in her pink heart shirt for Miss Jody. Love that. And here is my pink haired contribution. And here's Miss Nazzy in her beautiful rose pink dress. Wonderful pictures, Miss Nazzy. Here is Cheryl Hogan marching for women's health. And a picture of her with Debbie Dingle, one of my fav favorite Congress ladies. I love it. Everything for women's health. And then a very touching photo that Miss Sonia sent of her childhood toy and her daughters, her dear, dear daughters' favorite with their pink hearts in support for Miss Jody. So wasn't that a nice day? That was a lot of fun. And I thank you everyone who participated. Now, I've got, let me see, I think, I think it's in here. Yeah, July 3rd. Okay, here are some new photos I have. I told you that I was babysitting my grand dog, Polly, and I just love this pose, but it just shows that she was totally comfortable with being here, and there's Mark in his workspace, a.k.a. dining room. Then here are my beautiful daughters. They were visiting together up in Maryland. Love that picture of my girls. And here's my daughter Becky with Katie's dog, Henry. He is the sweetest doggy. Here is a trip with, on their way driving. Beautiful sky. Oh, look at that. Is that the sweetest boy that is a beautiful dog. And here he is with that same daughter, Becky, snuggling. And boy, do you take good naps when a doggy's snuggling with you. And then this is my granddaughter, Charlie, saying hello to a goat. And, you know, with her being a city girl, it's fun to go to Aunt's farm and enjoy the farm animals. And here's Charlie with Henry. Charlie and Henry became fast friends. This is my grandson, Evan, 15th birthday. Yay, Evan. This is a drive through Richmond. We used to drive through Richmond often when my kids were little. And there's this church that they built the highway right around. I mean, within just, you almost feel like you could reach out and touch it. And they love this. They always called it Big Ben. And that's just one of the things they remember from their childhood. Isn't that cute? And then there's Charlie snuggling with Henry. Then here's my daughter Katie with her sheep and goat. Aren't they wonderful? I love those sheep. Mm. And the goat's cute as can be. Here is my grandson. When my daughter was up at Katie's, my son brought and his wife brought their two little boys. And this is Donnie. He's almost two years old. Time has flown. And here, 
And Russell's got the mouth open like a baby bird. So cute. He's got Donnie. That's my son, Christopher. He's got Donnie on his lap and feeding Russell. And there is Charlie again with Henry. There is Russell thinking, can I get up these stairs before anybody notices? <laughs> and here is a picture of all of them. So we've got my daughter, Katie, my granddaughter, Charlie, my daughter, Becky, my son, Christopher, and Donnie, and Russell, and his beautiful wife, Nikki, and my wonderful son-in-law, David. There they all are. That's fantastic. I'm so glad they get along and love spending time together. All right. I think that's it. Pictures for today. So please feel free to send me pictures that you'd like to share, whether it is work you have done, whether it's something special. In fact, you know what? It's just about time for summer plants to, sh to show each other what we planted in our garden. So just let me write in real quickly. Aren't, aren't the sheep and goats cute? Um, my daughter has always loved sheep. Always, always. Okay. So if you have pictures you'd like to put in our, our time to quilt at twc.com. And, oh, that, look at Carol. She's so good. Uh, pink for Jody. Yes. So, anyway, I hope you have something enjoyable to do for July 4th. And let me see if I can get this to tilt back a little bit. I hope you have something fun to do. It, fun might be sewing on your favorite quilt project of the moment. Maybe taking a nap. Um, making something really good to eat or read a good book. There we go. And it's all means you're taking care of you because you can't take care of others unless you take care of yourself first. So any other questions? Oh, thank you, Miss Debbie. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. I, I am so lucky. I wanted my kids to be very close and to love each other. I always told them, friends come and go, but family's forever. And uh, so treat each other the very best of anyone, you know, because who knows if you even have that friend down the road, but you'll always have your best sister. So, and, and luckily it's work. They're all very, very close. They love spending time together. And that meant everything to me. All right. Anything else? Then please go out and have fun or relax. I need to trim some more bushes and get busy on a few projects around here. Take good care. It was wonderful to see each and every one of you. And happy birthday again, Miss Linda. I would sing for you, but I don't want you to cry on your birthday. So <laughs> take good care, everybody. Oh, thank you, Kaz. So good to see all of y'all. If if you have been a member and, and join and want to join our groups IO, please send me an email and I'll sign you up. Take good care, everyone. I'm going to go see Top Gun Woo, in IMAX. Oh, I hope I don't get nauseous. <laughs> I better have plenty of popcorn. Yes. <laughs> take good care, Miss Jody. Please take the best care of yourself, Miss Linda. We're hoping you get your energy back and your eyes will work beautifully. And we love you all. Bye-bye, dear, dear people. You're the best. Love you the, bu love you the bunches. Bye-bye.